This is the first episode of Gadget. I'm finally making it. Um, little software, little cameras, little knickknack here and there. And we're now doing our first episode. So, let's get rolling. Yeah, let's light this up. Alright, enough of that. Let's get something done. You're wasting my paint. Today's episode is how to use a sewing machine in a manly fashion. Now, I don't know how you got into the position that you need a sewing machine. Um, maybe you got divorced? Don't want to know why? Maybe you just slipped and fell into that pussy cat? Um, or maybe... You had a sewing machine laying around and you asked the wife, uh, hey, can you sew this? And you started getting yelled at. Um, because she don't know how to sew. Fortunately, I know how to sew. In about 8th grade, I took sewing class because I wanted to be a repair guy. I wanted to know how things function. Um, so I took home ec and I learned how to sew. Um, so I'm going to teach you here on YouTube. Let's get started with the basics of a sewing machine. So if you're going out to a thrift shop or yard sailing for a sewing machine, here is the biggest tip of all. This operates your sewing machine. Make sure the sewing machine has its pedal. I've seen a lot of people try to use a sewing machine or buy a sewing machine for some apparent reason. They buy it without the pedal. That irritates me, seriously getting called on a repair job. Hey, can you fix my sewing machine? And I show up and go, where's the pedal? And they go, well, um, um, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Well, that's the biggest thing. This thing is, we'll call it your gas pedal. So the harder you hit it, the faster machine is gonna operate. So you wanna keep it on a foot that you can control the best. In my case, it's my gas foot. So, I'm going to use my right foot. So, we're going to start by plugging it in. So, it's going to come with a weird looking little plug on this side. And then it's going to come with a standard plug. Okay, so what you want to do is plug this into the side of the machine. It's really not hard, it only goes in one way. This is going to be plugged into your outlet. Now your sewing machine, well, it, it might have a light, it might not have a light, but the way you test it, make sure there's no string in there. So now you got the functions of your sewing machine. Now you know your sewing machine at least works. So you can play with it with your hand. This is how I kind of learned a little bit is you could feel just by squeezing it a little bit the the pace of what the sewing machine is going to be so this is just barely hitting it all right then you get full speed full speed full speed so now you got the gist of how it's going to function so there is a little round knob here oh well it's actually pretty big it's going to be on the side here okay as you're pushing your pedal it's going to spin in a certain direction. So now this one's spinning counterclockwise. So what I do, for reference later, is I'm going to mark it is that it goes this way. Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. This is just a dry erase marker, so don't worry about it. It's no big deal. You just can wipe it off. Um, with that being said, you're going to need to know that later when you're actually sewing. Let's start getting the sewing machine set up for you. All right, first thing is first. The most important little guy here. All right, I'll get a zoom in shot for you. The most important little guy. All right, I call him the general laborer. So with him, he does everything in the back. He does all the work and only, he only takes he only takes just a little bit of string. So, he's going to do everything behind. 
So that's why I call him the general labor. He's doing all the work, mainly all the work here. He's going to tie all your knots and everything. So this is real important on how to set this up. Okay, so let's take your little general laborer, and he goes up here, this pin, all right? We're going to push him on the pin. He's going to lock into place. On this model, there's no switches or anything like that to start winding him up, because we've got to put string on him. The reason why we got to put string on him, because we're going to put him down here below, all right? When we put him below, we're going to put him in a certain way. We'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. No big rush. So, we're going to string them up. Now, in order to string them up, we've got to click it this way. So, we're just going to push it off to the side. And now, you, if you hit your gas pedal, you can actually see them spin in a certain direction. All right? It's no big deal which way it actually goes. But, we've got to string them up. We've got to give them a little bit so he works. We're going to call it, he's going to get minimum wage. We're going to give him minimum wage today. So, we're going to use this pretty cheap thread here. We're going to put it on this shaft. This is your spooling shaft or whatever. All right. Then we're going to give it this cap. This cap locks your spool in the place and also helps unwind it from your spool. It's really not that hard. It just slides all together. Now we're going to loop this string accordingly. So everything has its own instructions basically written on these things because every manufacturer is going to be a different spec now we're going to zoom in on the, the top here just for you you're going to take your spool and you're going to go around this tensioner now i really hate this tensioner it, it just doesn't work for me it doesn't get it tight enough or it doesn't or it makes it just too tight it just makes it too tight. I hate when it's too tight because then it's going to start pulling around in here. All right. If it's too loose, it's going to and just bird's nest all down in here. So what I do is I go by feeling. So let's get to this. We're going to actually go around its little tensioner. All right. Give it a little tug. So now it's in its little tensioner. Now you're going to take your end. We're going to pull the bobbin back off, your little general laborer, all right? And there's a hole. There's always holes on these things. So what you do is you go th from the inside to the outside. It's really no big deal. Now, if you, if you have a bad cut end, I really can't zoom in on these things because they're really tiny. If you have a real bad cut end, you're not going to, you're going to, you're going to, Really frustrate yourself. So what you're going to do is get out your manly knife or a pair of scissors. So I'm going to get my manly knife out and just dink. You know it's a manly knife if it can cut that like it wasn't even there. I'm going to set my manly knife way over here. So now you have a good cut end. Say you still can't get it into your general labor. Some people go limp. I, you know, it, it, you got to stick it in a mouth in order to get it hard enough. I, it just needs to be stiff enough to stick it in the hole. Sometimes you just you can't rub a little blue pill on it. You just got to stick it in a mouth. So now it made it a little stiffer. So what you're going to do, again, go from the inside to the outside. We're not tying any knot or anything like that. We're just going to hold it like that. Put it back on its shaft and click it over. So what I do is I hold both ends. All right. This one here is going to be for your tension. This one's going to be for your tension. So this one here is just going to hold it in place. And you want to slowly hit your pedal. It's going to spin. And you want to let go with this now. Now that it got a couple loops on there. You can take your manly knife again, or a pair of scissors. And just chop the little end off. It's not that hard. Really not that hard. Really not that hard. It is actually very easy. So, now you want to watch your string. Don't let it get caught up in anything. 
and you want to get it in there. So start hitting your pedal, it's going to start feeding into them. You want to go slow, you want to feel the tension. See, I don't like that tensioner because you just, again, you might make it too tight. It might, it, it might feel like a virgin. You don't want to make it so loose that it feels like a Harlem hoe. You just want to make it on MILF status. Just, just enough. Just enough. So what I do is I just feel it. And it's going to go up and down on the shaft. You don't want too much now. But we're going to fill it about halfway. cheap string had a little knot or had a piece of lint just wasn't right so you just want to get it on there but fill it about halfway no big deal you if you're already doing one or two sewing jobs fill it a little bit so I'm about halfway I, I don't like to fill it all the way because you're just gonna bird's nest somewhere now if you got the tension right and everything don't forget to cut it with your manly knife and unclick it. So we're going to click this way. Now it's going to go back into sewing machine mode. And just drape your string off. It's no big deal. No big deal. So now you know how to give your general labor a little bit of money so he starts working. Now we're going to have to feed him. Ugh. This, this, is, this is a complicated part. You're going to get frustrated. So we're going to open the little door. Behind on that little door is usually an instruction. Okay? So you're going to try to follow. You're going to try to follow that instruction there. All right? So you see the bobbin or your general labor. You see which way it goes. So you you know the string, so it's obviously not going to go this way. All right? So you cuz your string's going the wrong direction. So it's showing that the string wants to go this way. I apologize. It is a little hard to get these little components all zoomed in and everything. So we got your little door, which is going to give you your little instruction manual again. Don't forget about them. So we're going to take your little labor. We're going to stick them in there the way it shows the direction of the string. That is critical. The direction of the string must go a certain way. So now that it says the loop's going to go this way, and then it's going to pass the first notch, go to the second notch. All right. So on this model, you're going to bring this string around your general labor, find the first notch, skip it, go to the second notch. And now he's locked in. Not too difficult. So now that that's accomplished, we're going to leave that be. All right. The reason why I'm leaving it be is because I'm going to actually try to use the needle to lift it. Because underneath this foot is a hole. All right. A foot is actually going to, I mean, a finger is actually going to come out, grab the string, and go to the other string and tie that knot. So we're going to leave this be right now, and we're going to set up for the other string. So you want to you're gonna grab a hold of your string, your thread, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter because you're doing whatever you want to do. All right. So everything is labeled. Like I always keep saying, everything's labeled on these things. We're gonna, we're gonna go through one, go around two, go around three, four, go up to five, go to six, and put it through the needle. It's really not that hard. It's really easy. We clicked it in through one. Not that big of a deal. Clicked it in through one. So now we're going to go around two and put it in that little hook thing. We're going to go down number three. Back up number four. Go around five. And six is underneath. So six is actually this hook. So we just bring it around six. Not that hard. 
Now is the challenging part. I've got to get it through the needle. So the proper way of putting it through a sewing machine is from front to back. Just like a woman is supposed to wipe from front to back. You don't want to go back to front. Ugh. No. Uh-uh. If you ever see that, just run. All right. There is many ways of fishing this through the needle, all right? One way is use the little device they actually have attached to the machine. Some of them, I've never seen this until I found this machine, okay? I used to do it this way. So, I'm going to show you this way first. This, let's see if I can get it to zoom in for you. This right here is what you use to fish it through the needle hole. So you don't have to work on trying to get it stiff enough to stick through the hole. You stick this through the hole first. And then when it goes through the hole, it's going to open back up. And you stick the string in there. And you pull it through the needle hole. Really not that hard. Now let me show you how to use the needle threader. So, you might have to take the foot off, but I really don't. you got to look for the little hole. kind of hard to show you this on camera because it's such little intricate work. It's not like working on a car where you got big nuts and bolts and wrenches. And... See now I bent it all up. You gotta flatten it back out. I gotta remove the foot. I think. Alright so you can remove the foot on this model. It was just a little lever right here. Always remember to put that foot back on. Because you're going to need it. Alright, so now it is through the hole. I don't know if you can see that on camera because it's so tiny. You're going to grab your string. I'm too lazy because there's so much. I'm going to get my manly knife out again. Bink! Trim it back. And you can stick it in through the big wire loop. Up, oh, up. Oh, it ain't stiff enough. Gotta stick it in the mouth. So now that it's through the metal loop, you're gonna pull your little needle threading device through. Now it is from front to back. Front to back. Real important here. Real important here. Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to do it the way the sewing machine tells you to do it. So we're going to take it back out. We're going to get in here. I'm going to put the foot back on to show you you can do it with the foot. It's real simple. Real simple here. Pull the little lever up, stick the foot back on. Now there's this little teeny weeny device here. It comes down. You can see that on camera? See that little hook on there? There's a little hook way back in here. Way back in here. Alright, so what it does is it cradles your needle. And when it gets down to a certain section, it actually goes through the hole and stays there. They make this really, really, really easy. So now what you do is you put the string through all the hooks. I don't know if you can see that, how it went through this hook. Well, it's underneath it. All it is is underneath it. So it's going down, wrap it around that hook, that hook, that hook. Now the little teeny weeny hook that went through the needle should, if you got it right. Nope, I missed. We'll do it again. Nope, oh, we're going to have to move the needle. No. There it goes. Alright. I'm going to try this again here. So around that one. 
and around all these. So it goes through the little gadget. And see the gadget? It's going to pull it. It actually pulled the string through. It's really not that hard. So now you got a loop back here. And you pull all the rest of your string through. And there it is. From front to back. Again. From front to back. Now last step is, people don't know about this one because it ain't marked on these machines. There's another little hook up here above everything to keep it straight. You want to get it around that hook. Sorry I'm blocking your view, but now that it's around that hook, see how it's straight with the needle around the hook. Okay, so now we have to get your little general labor string through this little hole underneath there. We're going to try using the machine to accomplish this. What you're going to do is, when the instructions, the instructions say to go through the second slot, back through the first slot, and hold it way over here. Sometimes it might make it better to actually put the cover back on. Leave your string sticking out over here. Now you're going to manually operate the machine with the knob that's over here. The one that I told you to label, so you want to make it go forward. So follow your little arrow, which this machine is counterclockwise. You're going to make the needle go down. And then it's going to come back up with the string. So now that you, this is the thread that went through the upper needle and I pulled on it and now you can actually see the loop it actually tied a loop and a loop is what we want to get out so now that I'm fishing it through I'm going to do the one with least resistance which is the one that's coming out through the cover and I'll watch that guy go you want to bring him all the way out here through the back Now we can reset our string for the needle. You're going to go underneath the foot through the slot and out the back. Now that your machine is set up, we can actually begin to sew something. Or attempt to. The settings might need to be changed on your sewing machine. We will go over some of the settings, but it really is not that critical. We are going to start by practicing with a piece of paper. No big deal, it's just paper, computer paper. So what I'm going to do is fold it in half to give it a little bit more strength. I'm going to get my marker. Alright? I'm going to draw a line on it. Just, 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 just a line. Not hard. And we're going to stick the paper in the sewing machine. Big step right here. Back here there's a lever. It's going to lower the foot. That is a big, big thing. If you do not put that foot down, it's, number one, it's not going to feed through automatically. Number two, it's just going to bird's nest all over the place. So now we're going to test our sewing machine. So you're going to get your pedal, get it close. Now you got one string on top that goes to the needle, and you want to make it go out the back. You got another one on the bottom. On the bottom. And it goes out the back. Everything goes out the back door here. So now that the needle is up in the air, we're going to slowly start to hit the sewing machine. And it's going to start going. Alright, we're going to stop, and what, the way I stop all the sewing machines is I turn the little knob again until the needle comes all the way back up. So you want to turn it forward until the needle comes all the way close enough to the top position. 
Not that hard, not that hard. Then you're gonna reach back here and lift the foot. And what you wanna do is slowly pull out. Slowly pull out. They like it that way. And don't just, all right. I'm gonna take your manly knife and you're gonna cut the two strings off. Make sure you put them back to the back of the machine. Now you sewed something. Your little general labor did all the work of all the knots in the back. And up at the top is your pretty edge. This machine is completely set. Now that you sewed your first line, let's actually really show you how to sew. So we're going to get another piece of paper. We're going to fold it in half again. Now this time we're going to do what is called a seam. Now you always sew a piece of clothing from the inside. So it's always reversed. You want to put your inside of your pair of pants or something like that facing up and facing down. So when you sew, when you open the article of clothing, you're going to have this beautiful seam when you fold it back inside out. So. Let's get this set up. On this piece of paper, about a half inch from the edge, about a half inch, it doesn't, it's not really critical. I do a half inch to a quarter inch. You could put some dotted lines. We're gonna note that is where your seam is. So you won't always want a little extra. So we're gonna make a couple more dots. I can do it all by visualization. Visualization. So you want to keep it basically this foot. See the edge of the foot here? That's where I usually keep the edge of the material. You want to keep it past the little teeth that are going to feed everything. So you want to put it right at the edge and lower your foot. Now that the foot is lowered, we can actually begin to sew. But before you can actually sew the whole seam, you have to create a knot. So to create a knot, really not hard here. Really not hard. Think of this as your transmission of your car. Your gas pedal is going to make it go forward. It's automatic. It's going to go forward at the automatic speed. But to make it go reverse, you have to change the shifting knob. So the shifting knob is located right here. It is labeled reverse. Now with this model, you have to hold it down. Some models, you, you hit it down and it stays down. And it's going to always stay in reverse. But when you let go on this model, it's going to go back to forward mode. That's actually really, really good for me. Because I'm quick at doing a knot. So what you want to do, put your foot on the gas pedal. You're going to go forward about a half an inch. No, no specifics here. Just go forward. All right, we went forward. Hit reverse. Let go of everything. Hit forward again. Now you created a knot. It's really not that hard. Apparently, you're going to see in episode number two, some people can't make a knot. And that's why I'm showing you how to use a sewing machine. I buy these pants and the seams just fall out because they did not put a proper knot in there. That is not that hard. Apparently when you buy a pair of pants some people can't do that. So now we're going to finish out the seam. So we're going to go all the way to the edge of the paper. It feeds itself, don't worry, just slowly hit the gas pedal. Gonna go all the way across. General rule of thumb is I try to keep it a little bit past this foot, just a just a hair, right on the edge. Now that we got close to the edge, you can go all the way to the edge. You really don't want to, because when you're actually sewing things, you want to leave about a half an inch all the way around to whatever you want to sew. So we're we're gonna turn the corner. No, we're not gonna turn the corner. We're gonna cut a knot right now. So now that you got close to the edge, 
What you want to do? Hit reverse. You're going to reverse the machine about a half inch. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go forward. Back to that half inch. Then go over to your big knob over here and turn it forward until your needle goes all the way up. Not hard. Not hard. You're going to reach back here when this model is back here. If I can find it. And you're going to lift the foot. And you want to slowly pull out. Slowly. Easy. You don't want to break them strings. Bring it to the front. Get your manly knife. And tap it. Put your manly knife away. And now you have a seam. So let's check out what we did. So we started by making our knot. You can see the knot right there. Then you made your seam. Then you made another knot. So you can begin to trim the edges off. You can leave it. You can whatever. It's no big deal. It's not going nowhere. It's not that hard. Not that hard. So let's open or Technically, if you're doing fabric, this is the inside, this is the inside. So let's flip it back to the proper direction. So say this is your outer pants. See that seam? Exactly, you don't see it. Now you actually have a seam. It's not going nowhere. Ooh, two pieces of paper. You can get two pieces of paper to stick like that. You can sew a pair of pants or a shirt or a pair of gloves. You can do whatever you want. That's big time savings of money there. Let's get a little more creative. I now have two pieces of paper. Two. I'm going to draw a pretty little print. So I'm going to take my hand, stick it down. This is for practice. Practice, practice. Makes this easier. I'm going to draw out my hand in a rough cut. So now that I drew out my hand, we're going to sew my hand. So you're going to keep both pieces of paper together. Which, to do that, we just got to hold them. You could always fold the ends, fold the corner, do something to hold it together. This is just for practice only. It's really no big deal. But this is also going to teach you how to turn corners and sew whichever way you want to do. You can, you, can, you can get two pieces of fabric, sew this together, and you just now made a glove. This is real important. Here. So this is just practice. That's why it's real important. So what we're going to do again the two pieces of string are still there. The two pieces of string are still here. So you want to put them out the back. You want to put in your piece of paper. And where you actually drew your line, you're going to put your needle above it and lower the foot. Now once the foot is lowered, you can start hitting your gas pedal. Go forward a half an inch, roughly. Well, I got a little crazy there, didn't I? Now you're going to hit reverse. Right back over top of what you just sewed. And then now we're going to go forward again, and we can actually continue down the line and actually go through the whole handprint. Tables wobbly. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna. When you want to make a corner, you can go slow, turn it a little bit. As long as the needle is up in the air, you can turn it just a little bit, just a little bit. We're getting a little off. Now we made the corner. Going down. Going to go into the finger groove here. So you can actually stop it. You can lift the foot a little bit. It's no big deal, no big deal, if you got to. Some people do it with the needle down in there. Some people don't. It's all your personal preference. So now we're right back to where we just stopped. We 
completely turn a piece of paper. And we're going to go again. So now we're coming up to the fingered edge again. I'm not doing this too pretty. I really don't care. This is just for your practice. I'm just showing you for your practice. Back into the finger groove. The needle is actually down this time. It don't matter. You can lift a foot a little bit, turn the whole piece of paper, and lower the foot again. It actually makes it easier when you leave the needle down. It's gonna feed itself. Now that we made it to the end, we're gonna make a knot. Hit reverse. About a half inch. Let go, go forward. Now make the needle come back up in the air. Turning the knob. You're gonna reach back here, lock the foot up, and slowly pull it out. You're gonna bring it out to the front and take your manly knife and just tap it. Now that we made a handprint, you can technically turn this inside out if it was fabric and poke all the fingers through, and you just made yourself technically a glove. So you could get a pair of scissors. I do got a pair of scissors. I just like to use my knife. It's always there. You cut away the extra fabric. If this was fabric. You know, you don't have to get too close. But you, this is what you would do. Well, I keep it about an eighth of an inch away just for fun. And, you know... I'm now done playing. So now that you got like an eighth of an inch, you can flip the material inside out. So this is where your hand would go, but this is the raw edge of material, raw edge of material, and your good stuff is actually inside. So you might have to sit there and fiddle it and get it all, you have to feed it all out here, just like a sock when it's inside out. Just fold it the other way. Now you've got yourself a little bit of a glove. With this machine, there is other settings. As you can see here on this knob, you turn the knob to whatever you want to make different types of seams, different types of threading, well, different patterns. That's the good thing about this machine. I don't need it. I never will. Never, never, never will. So on our next episode, I'm going to save you at least $40. I'm going to sew a pair of pants and then sew a crotch of a pair of pants and save you $40. Thank you, that concludes this episode. If you like this episode, and you wanna see other episodes, please hit the subscribe button below. If you wanna watch behind the scenes, you can go to www.facebook.com, I think it's forward slash, YouTube Repairman, and you'll find me, Randy Stern, doing what I do best, fixing things, saving money. I am always here to save a couple dollars. Because that's what we need to do in this economy now. Thank you and have a good night.